hey what's up today i'm going to be showing you how i painted this using wash in a loose style let's dive in and see how it was made first we need to set up the painting surface for wash or watercolor, I use a watercolor paper. In this case, I'm using Canson 300 grams watercolor paper with decal edges. I created these edges by tearing the paper with a roller. It makes it look like a handmade paper and I really dig that roll look. I tape down the paper with painter's tape on all four sides to leave some clean white borders which will look great when the painting is finished. And it is ideal for framing the image at the end. Alrighty, so here comes the controversy. Usually when I paint outdoors and I, when I paint for fun, I just go straight and you know, use a brush. I don't do a sketch or anything. I just want to capture the colors, how they are, the whole scenery, how it looks like before the, everything changes. Because when you're outdoors, you cannot control the light, you cannot control how everything might move or change or some, or it will or something might happen. In this painting, I also try to dive into it with the same approach. Here I'm approaching the painting with the same dynamics, straight with the brush despite being in a studio painting. When I do this, I feel the image is looser and not so constrained. I also feel I have a better control of the brush and I can hold it freely and loosely, and the process is not as tight as holding a pencil. I usually use yellow ochre or a washed out cadmium red or vermilion to sketch. In this case, I'm using a washed out yellow ochre. The idea is to make some marks where certain areas will be, main shapes, light, middle and shadow. And it's fun to see the sketch lines coming through the painting as they have their own color. Now the fun part begins. I will start choosing which colors to use in certain areas to try to construct the image little by little. The idea is to build houses and not objects. And what do I mean by this? You see, these images start getting more colors and looking better. I have to dance a little bit with the painting. It's a total mess, but it's an organized chaos in my mind. You are not going to be painting an object, but a whole system together. The idea is not to paint a petal or a leaf, but to build the image as a painter. You are not nature, you are not constructing a flower petal by petal, but you're building by masses or also called planes. So we're painting a part of the image that shares the same value combined together. And from that structure, we keep building on top of it. Now we add some order to this chaos. I'm going to add some acceptable details now. A lot of action also happens in the painting palette, but my palette is a mess. I usually reuse the colors that I'm using. Like these colors, the reds and the greens, I, usually, I tend to reuse them when I'm painting. Except this area, I tend to clean one area of the palette because then there are some specific colors that go with each painting and these are the, the area that I use for those colors. Also, note, this is just a box of yeah, watercolor colors, a box of 36 and it's big enough to do many mixings, but I also use other smaller boxes when I'm on the go. Sometimes the flower needs a different approach just because of the design of how their colors are mixed. So in this case, I'm using a wet on wet technique and I just dip the brush on orange and red without mixing it on the palette, but I let the colors be on the same tip of the brush. And that's how I'm constructing this flower. Here you can see me suffering to paint it coming and going. But at the end, I think we ended up getting into an agreement. And from time to time, you can see me testing the colors on the tape around the painting, just to see if they will look fine at the end. In case you wonder, this is where I clean my brushes. So I will show you a little clip now of how it actually looks and why is it so small. This is my water container. It's pretty small. Yes, I know, but hear me out. 
when I'm painting I'm in the zone so I don't want to waste time cleaning and refilling and going to the toilet and getting more water so I just refill it from my water bottle my fresh water that I have right next to me and when this is dirty I just throw it away in this water container well it's actually a gas cell of one liter empty I already used the gas cell and this is where I throw the dirty water and once it's all filled all the way up I throw this one away flushing down the toilet So adding the proper details to some areas before was essential to get uh, an idea of the whole image. But now we're adding the final details and blurring some other areas together. With wash as well as with oils, this is something achievable. Oils don't dry, so it's quite easy to blur lines together. With wash, well, you gotta reactivate the color underneath and mix it a bit with the other which also has to be wet. It's a bit more complicated and sometimes I actually struggle to do this, but I think it's way easier than doing it with acrylics, for example. I have no idea how you blur with acrylics. As you see, I am suffering a little bit, but at the end, I think it turns out okay. As I was constructing this whole final part of the image and I was building added details, I realized that the background color, the sky blue, Mm, didn't quite fit it with the whole flowers and the yellows and the pink. So I decided to mix a warm grayish, mixing some purples and some of the pink that was used in the painting to just go over the whole background, but also leaving some sky blue pass through. Children, cover your eyes because this is a sexy tape part. Ah, this is favorite part of most people and this is the moment where a tribute becomes a big door. As you can see the painting with the white borders, it puts all the chaos into a clean frame and it makes all the struggle worth it. This gave me the idea to add a little bit of golden details just to make it sparkle a little. So this was the process of painting this image. What do you think? I'm pretty happy with the result and I think each time I try to analyze and record the whole process I learn a little bit more about myself and how I organize this whole chaos. I've been already told by several painting teachers that at the beginning my paintings look like a chaos and then they start taking shape and at the end everything turns out good or great sometimes. I think life is a little bit like that. It's sometimes a chaos and a mess and then suddenly you know, you just have to go with the flow because at the end everything will be just fine.